So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and their challenges and what's really driving them forwards. And this morning, I'm delighted that we have back with us James Killaby, who's the Managing Director of Hibiscus PLC. So firstly, James, thanks again for coming back and, and talking to us. And if you'd like to introduce yourself to the audience and Hibiscus, what you do, how you do it and how you help people, that would be wonderful. Well, um Hibiscus is the largest supplier of uh, labels and software solutions to the chemical industry in the UK. We do all the labels. You see them on motorways, the reflective panels uh, on the back of tankers. We do the um, warning diamonds, the flammable liquid class three, and that should be nice bright red that you see occasionally on the back of decorators' vans. But uh, big uh, movers are, are barrel labels, Yep. They go on drums of chemicals to allow them to be shipped safely around the country. And all those labels have to be marked in a particular way to make sure that if there was any issue or any accidents, for instance, then they could be handled or the public could correctly respond to that. The chemical professionals involved could respond properly and the emergency services can as well. Um, we've been going since 1982. Uh, my parents set the business up. Um, my father is a chemical engineer, and if you cut him in half, it says it in the middle. Um, my mum was a, uh, a had already been a business owner and had some. In the business later, my um, my grandfather sold post-it notes and sticky tape in their original 3M days. Yes, in the growth market scheme of of 3m yep and my mother was a double entry book clerk of the traditional wow. uh very stilted copy um copy plate handwriting in the days of credits and yep. debits and lead prop ledgers brilliant so they kind of formed a, a group between them who had all the skills to um to bring the business on and um we as i said we started in 1982 with a maggie thatcher small business loan and I think from last dredging up um, of the thousand that were given out in the Leeds area, I think only single figures survived to this day. Um, well, wow. my parents officially retired in 2018. Um, and we are an ever growing business at the moment. Things are going well. We are. I'm very proud to say that we're just approaching double the size of the business I joined when I left university in 2006. Um, the great irony being that when I left university in 2006, I knew everything. And uh, now in 2023, a much older and bolder man, I appreciate I know very little. <laughs> What's happened in the interim, I have no idea. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. So two really significant wins there, just talking about it. One is the survival rate, because I think, you know, we I think we may have talked about this before, but unfortunately, um businesses over a five year period, um, only eighty percent of businesses uh, sorry, eighty percent of businesses fail in the first five years of operation. And of the twenty percent that survive, eighty percent of those will fail in the following five years. So to get past ten years puts us in the top four percent of businesses in general. Um, and y your example of being only a handful left is a, is a great example of that. But also the fact that as you said the the business is almost approaching double where it was when you when when you started. But, but you must be very proud of those yeah, two well, things. I am incredibly proud. Um, growing up, the business was everything. You know, that's what we talked about. That's what we did. Um, I used to come to not the current site, but the previous site um, on weekends. And my parents used to work in an evening. And I used to we used to do a lot of outwork in those days. So I used to sit in the back of my mum's car and we used to toddle around all the outworkers and, you know, see all these people. And I thought, it was great, you know, when I'd really? go there and say hello and all the rest of it. And and there were always boxes of labels in the boot of the car. And it, it was great. And, I mean, now we do about 14 million labels a year. 
Wow. Um, so <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> let's 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 be really honest. That is a lot, and that's a lot of labelling. It was recyclable. Um, there's some very specific statements in that, I admit. But um, yeah, it's it's an amazing achievement, and it wouldn't be possible without some of the brilliant people that work here. Um, and over the years, there have been the good and the bad. Um, but I like to think we've kept the very best. So. You know, it's, it, I mean, I know there's a lot of corny sayings about business and family, but when you're a family business, you've got kind of the family element. You know, I, when I joined full time in 2006, my parents worked here full time. So I, I had both the parental relationship. And then as that kind of evolved, there was me and, and them. And as I grew into my, what I do now more that changed as well. So it's, it's always a kind of a unique thing of, of um, family businesses. Like um, every year, my mum used to run a raffle only it wasn't a raffle because everyone won a prize. Which <laughs> Wonderful. I always said, you know, it's not a raffle because if it's a raffle, you have one ticket that's the winner. And, you know, <laughs> being an ex rugby player, I'm used to having breakfast, you know, in a bucket, but um <laughs> Uh, and and she used to stuff like that, and it was always carefully done. So there was always the right mix of presents for people, and everyone wanted, you know, and everyone got roughly what they wanted. And it's really? nice, and you just, you know, you wouldn't get that in, you know, in yes. in a massive company, I, such as my limited experience goes. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really proud of what we've achieved here. Um, which is always famous last word, so I won't say it again. But um, <laughs> you know, we've um, yeah. So I joined in two thousand six. We had the financial uh, crash in eight and nine. Yes, which was absolutely awful, and one of the most aggressive learning experiences I've ever had. Yep, because I um, barely eighteen months into the job, straight from university, you know it. It got fairly adult fairly quickly, yeah. you know, and I, it was physically and emotionally exhausting. Yeah. And the sheer amount of stress and learning that was going on was just ridiculous. But, you know, these experiences, if you come through them, kind of define who you are, yes. who you are in business. And, you know, it's it gives you a, a perspective, and yeah. especially a perspective on the back on the good times because you sort of sit there and think, ah, oh, well, you know, I've I've seen the I've seen the bad, and I don't want to go there again. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of lose that laissez-faire attitude. It's it's yeah. quite if you're not careful, you end up quite a feeling of looking over your shoulder a little bit. Yeah. And I'm choosing to think of it that way because being 22 and bloody terrified is not really what I wanted to think of it as, basically. No. no. It, it, I mean, I, I, it is really important, isn't it? A couple of key things is, is to, to, to look back, not let's say frequently, but regularly to say that's how far we've come, you know, that we've overcome these things. So that, that yeah. builds the resilience of, so if we have something similar or anything even different, um that we, we we've got the resilience to to deal with it if that makes any sense it's 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 important okay. to look back and it, it's really interesting about economic cycles I, I i remember our founder brad um talking a few years back about the economic cycles being being similar to the seasons and and what he meant by that is even in the depth of a an economic winter um Farmers know spring will follow winter. They don't know exactly when it starts because that's that, that you know that may change, but it will happen. And I think that understanding that an economic cycle is a cycle. It's not an economic straight line. It's not if we go into a dark place. It's not to say dark forever. And and 
that I think that's important, isn't it, to understand that it will change. And yeah. our, our job at that point is just getting through it, just getting through it, and that's a win. Yeah, and my granddad always said, from the dark days of selling, you know, in a recession, you've got to go out and take other people's customers. And I appreciate that's very kind of pinstripe suits, wide lapels, and you know, and casual prejudice, but it's oh, those days of selling, but. It's true, you know, yeah. we are a very much a niche industry. We are very much, people want to ship chemical product around the country, around the world. They need a label on it. The need is there. It's not going to go away. We're not, we're not um, tied up with fashions or trends or not that I'm either of those things, but, you know, it's, we don't have that discretionary spend element. We don't have that B to C. What's the coming thing? What's you know? We're a need. We're not you know. We're not an undertakers, which is the supposedly the always recession proof business. Yes, but but we do have a certain amount of protection from the yeah. ebb and flow of the markets, and all our customers have quite unrecognizable names but their products are very very recognizable yes you know the kind of their end product is under the sink or it's in makeups it's in uh cosmetics it's in um you know products that you don't even realize they're in your car it's you know you wash your car with things you you know heat your home with it you put it in your tools you you know it's it's everywhere you know and from the high end to the low end it's always kind of pervading you're all kind of bubbles but the reality of the system the reality of the situation is a lot of chemical companies spend an enormous amount of time effort and money to make sure that what does come into contact with the consumer is as safe as it possibly, possibly can be. Yeah. You know, yeah, great. Um, it, I, it, it's, a, it's a funny industry to be in, to be honest, and there's always that kind of – it's a little bit incestuous. A lot of people have worked for other companies, kind of, <laughs> oh, I knew you from there, and then I yep. work there, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's nice, and it's – it's quite an old fashioned industry in terms of a lot of its relationship based. Yep. It's quite um, kind of handshakes and contacts and and a lot of a lot of relationships, you know, and it's nice when you, you go to awards dinners or you go to um trade shows or whatever that you see all these people and you know Oh, where are you now and what are you up to? And no, it's nice. It's a nice industry to be in, to be honest. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. So I mean, we spoke, I was trying to think it was probably last summer. So it was probably you know best part of 18 months ago. And I, I I'm I'm keen to know um, what's changed for you in the business since since we last spoke. We've um a lot, to be honest. An enormous amount has changed. Um most notably, we have, after many years, finally decided to completely redo our offices from we, – we we got so far down, you could even find the sticky floor tiles and the sort of smell of old cigarettes that kind of <laughs> you find in buildings of a certain age. Yep. Uh, because we've been here since 1986, so it's um, it's not new. Um, so we completely ripped everything back down to floor and yep. concrete tiles and uh, all the way back, and we just completely redesigned all the offices. I mean, they were they were originally put up in well, the original building was built in eighty six, and in two thousand and three and four we extended to current size. We tripled the floor floor space, but a lot of that went to production and our actual manufacturing element rather than to offices. 
And we got to a stage where we had departments that now had, you know, three people in or two people in that were in the biggest offices because they used to have six. And we had, and we had the reverse where smaller departments were getting bigger and bigger and they had um, the smallest offices. So right. we took the chance to move people around. And, um, we took chance to say, you know, what do you want in your office? What does, you know, it's, you spend, even under hybrid working conditions, you spend an enormous amount of your time at your office. Absolutely. So how how do people want it to look? Yeah. Brilliant. What do you want? You know, because um, just buying out of the local catalogue doesn't really get you anywhere. And, and if, no. you know, it, and we were lucky to work with um, Rework, just around the corner, actually, um, who really helped us design all our offices and get everything sorted out so it looks different and better. Yep. Um, and we um, we've put, during the hike in the uh, energy consume, uh, consumption prices, our energy bills uh, went up by four times. Oh, well. Uh, from the overnight, for, we came out of our deal at the end of October and then got hit by the new figures. So we invested in uh, putting solar panels on the roof, which, yep. unbeknownst to me, you do get a surprisingly large amount of power out of Leeds Sunshine, which I never expected. Um, <laughs> And as we are quite an energy hungry business, yes, you know, so it's really it's really worked for us, and you know, it's a, a big a big environmental positive because yep. just taking more and more out of the grid, you know, that's a big a big cost for us, yep. and you know, only getting bigger. And when you have things like twenty five kilowatt dryers, turning office lights off and switching to LED lights. While it has its place, will only get you so far. Yes. Um, yes. Um, it's kind of the realities of the manufacturing process. Um, if we we need the the high power dryers because otherwise the inks that are needed to be put onto materials to survive the British roads, yeah, um, won't cure properly. Yes. So we have um, an enormous energy need that we're now looking at servicing ourselves well it's up to 45 percent now from our solar panels or shall we say was before the drizzle oh wow yeah, that's quite that's quite a significant input into your business yeah. there and, and cost it enough. is yeah oh yeah uh, it's really quite significant um we're lucky that the the building roof is kind of east to west yep. set so we could and quite a comparatively shallow pitch Yep. So we could spread them out, but we um no, it was a it was a good choice. We haven't obviously got figures for winter yet, and winter in Leeds isn't great. No, no. Um <laughs> as it rains sideways for the next three months. Yes. Um <laughs> we shall see. But at the moment that's very good. And to be honest, we saw in in the general print industry a lot of people kind of selling off old print equipment. Um, there's a lot of drive in things like uh, wine bottle labeling and whiskey bottle labeling and well, in general labeling for, for greater and greater and quicker innovation, which means that us in our very specific needs can kind of find pieces of equipment that we can buy and add to our fleet and, yep. and buy and, and have reconditioned and just kind of adding technical competencies on buying equipment, If it'll, um, if it's properly reconditioned and will do the job, and is you know, and is technically, he's he's technically proficient. You know, yep. when we first started out, my dad made the machines, the hand oh, wow. I mean, wow. it breeds a certain pragmatism. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Being a Yorkshireman, it, it kind of um, cuts the right way, shall we say? <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah, it's so we've expanded our capacity quite significantly with some not my uh, choices, but um, some shrewd purchasing to expand our 
expand our capacity, expand and prevent your business risk because, you yep. know, you're one roof panel away from a machine going down and, you know, we've had some bad weather. So in a kind of disaster situation, there's always got to be that kind of um, – what happens if this goes wrong? What happens if that goes wrong? Where's yeah. my backup plan? Where's my yes. kind of what's that thing I'm you know the rainy day fund as it were? Yes. So it's um, it's meant that we've significantly increased our ability to grow. Yeah, we've significantly we've taken on the ability to produce some new products, which yeah. we are in the process of developing. And we had a fairly significant management reshuffle as well. Yes, great. Um, which, so far, I mean, it's, it's in its infancy. Well, it's not in its infancy. It's nine, ten months old now, but it's it's working well. I, really? You know, I'd, I'd reached a point where I had eight or nine direct reports, yeah. uh, people who were coming to me for things, and I just wasn't able to help, or yeah. I was off doing something else, or... I just spread too thin. And the reality is, you know, I am not the best at everything here. I'm nor should I be. It's my job to be an all rounder. It's not my yeah. job to be, you know, absolutely a printer or accounts or whatever. I my job is to be the all rounder. Yeah. Great. You know? Great. So putting a, a layer of management, putting heads of department to cover the Brilliant. traditional areas you would see in a big company, but obviously we're a lot smaller than that. Um, and it's working very well. We've got some some very good people, um, yep. some of whom have been with us for a very long time. Yep. Um, and our general employment policy is to employ people and put them in at, in, at the bottom, so start with kind of entry-level roles. Yep. And then there's always that chance to grow. Cause Brilliant. You know, I couldn't think of anything worse than being told, right, well, you're going to do that job until I tell you to stop. Yeah. I mean, that's just soul destroying. Yes. You know, that's that's uh, Roman salt mine territory. Um, <laughs> putting things in boxes. Um, I remember one delightful um Easter holidays, my dad's saying, oh, we've got a job for you. You're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> I guess not. So at the time, we used to do light engineering work. Right. And we had, well, my parents had bought an en a light engineering company. Right. Who used to make bits for our machines. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... It came to the point where we used them so much, we go, right, well, we're going to bring this in-house. Not physically, but, well. Um, and bought the business, such as these things are done in Leeds. It's not exactly a, you know, it's not exactly an episode of Suits or the Thomas Crown Affair. You know, it's very much, you know, <laughs> tag packets at, at dawn. Um, and one of the things they used to do and we took on was making gears for Optair buses back in right. the day the engine parts for octair buses yes and uh, if you're taking a bus in the west yorkshire area in probably the late 80s you've yep. ridden around on something with one of our gears in it and my easter holidays job was carrying bits of metal unturned pieces of metal um from a van in the well from the engineering shop that we'd bought to the van filling the van being yep. driven here to you know to the side of Leeds and then carrying those bits of metal across the factory floor to where they're stored. And it was <sighs> tiring. Let's, let's put it politely. It's tiring, but you know, if... and, and there are some really dull jobs in the printers, but they all need doing, but yep. you know, I think the more they can be spread out, the more people can advance and learn new skills, the better, because mm -hmm. you need, you know me swapping days for dollars. There's not that kind of no answer of oh, let's just where do you see yourself in five years? Well, Boulder doing the same thing. It's not. 
it doesn't get people out of bed, does it? It's not, it's not a challenge. It's not. It's yeah. not fun. And I know work's work, but at the end of the day, you, know, you spend a lot of time here. Yes. Or work, you know. So it's got to be enjoyable or at least yep. challenging. Yep. You know, it's um, it's got to be worthwhile. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and I, I guess looking back specifically, Mel, mainly over the last sort of. 18 months that since you last spoke and you look at the the wins you've had and the challenges you've had to face what what is there any new sort of learnings of, about business and growing business that that you've learned from those things there's been we bought some we made an investment into machinery and one of the things that what we normally do is get to the point where we are so busy that um, lead times are on the verge of suffering yep. or a piece of equipment is at 100% capacity. We have the confidence to say we're going to grow into this piece of equipment and this capacity is something that we are going to grow into. Yep. And now is the right time to make the equipment purchase. Yes. And we will use it in time you know the business will grow and we will kind of fill this space um but at the time that at the time the attitude is very much well don't borrow a penny more than you need yeah don't borrow if you don't need to don't get things into the business that you don't need right now you know i'll buy a new pen when this one runs out it's that kind of attitude Yep. And having the faith to kind of say, no, we are on, we are growing. This business is going to grow. We have the right people in the right places to make that happen. Yep. And we are going, we're going somewhere and we're not just going, oh, well, we made 10 quid more than last year. Well done, lads. You know? Yes. It, it's, that's not the attitude. It's like, no, we are planning for our growth. We are planning for the future. And I'm not going to say there haven't been, moments in the court of staring at the bedroom scene at 3 a.m. where I've thought, oh, you know, is that the right idea? Yep. But just you do spend a lot of time going, is it the right idea? Yes. Is it the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Um, but so far, he says touching wood slightly, um, it has been the right choice. And we have taken on new products that we wouldn't have been able to before. And we have yep. genuine customer wins and we have, you know, solved problems for current customer or previous customers because we have that now. And, really? and, we and in the past, we wouldn't have done that. And it's taken that level of physical, well, emotional distance from the business to be able to say, you know, this is where we're going. Let's plan for where we're going. Let's put that plan in place and let's do it. Not just think about it, not just sit there and go, oh, well, I wish it could be this, I wish it could be that. Let's let's take action and get it done. And all of those cliches together, um, it's going the right way. And not my choice, but we've chosen very, very carefully and very, very shrewdly, I think. Not me, admittedly. <laughs> but in what opportunities it will open for us. Yeah. And having that faith. Because, I mean, I was talking to someone a few months ago. When you're busy, and I don't know if it's a hangover from the financial crash or whatever, but when you're busy, there's always that feeling of, oh, is it going to go all the way? Is, is someone going to turn it off? You know, is there a big switch that says no more for you somewhere? You know, and it's going to stop. But when when you're quiet, you know, when it's bank holiday or it's Easter or whatever, you know, or it's, you know, it's like last week of December and everyone's thinking about turkey and presents rather than... Yep. It's having that faith. And the way you have it one way, but not the other. I yes. Think, well, no, we need to have faith. It, 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 it's a nuts thing. It is like, it, you know, if, if I was to say to you, 
everything in the future is going to go perfectly, you'd say rightly, you're nuts. That's stupid thing. Mm. But worry and fear is primarily thinking everything's going to go wrong. Yeah. And so neither yeah. neither is true. It's if it's somewhere in the middle. And and you know, and, and and if we accept that, then you know but the the other question is if you you know, I feel we get more energized when we believe things are more likely to go better than worse. And therefore, why wouldn't mm. you? Why wouldn't you live in a place yeah. where you know, not foolishness of you know, foolish optimism, but optimism is in general an energizing place to be. Yeah, because if there's an awful old saying about oh, if you think you're going to win, you think you're going to lose, you're right. You know, um, yep. Henry Ford. Shine away from sports metaphors uh, <laughs> massively. Um, but it, it's that kind of attitude, you know, and no one ever won. You never got a customer because you're just saying, oh, we're all right, you know. Yeah. Might be able to help. Absolutely. And that's not what gets you, you know, on the phone and ringing people up and saying, come and do business with us. Um, because you, you have to, you ought to have that fizz or it doesn't really work. Yeah. And it, it's one thing to have that in a, I hate the phrase customer facing role, but because, you know, without sales, we're just 30 people looking at each other, you know. And I think a lot of, there's been a mindset shift that, you know, we're not safe style UK or, you know, one of these where you see them on the telly and the big advert of, you know, buy, I said, buy one, get one free and all this kind of thing, which might be a Yorkshire only thing, I admit, but, <laughs> um, you know, we, we generally help people solve some problems. We're not yes. here to make a quick book and move on. Yep. You know, we have customers that we have had for 30 years and yep. we have gone through, Changes of personnel, changes of name, changes of company nationality, changes of everything. Yeah. Um, and still supply because it all goes back to an old phrase of my granddad's, you know, how easy is it to do business with your company? And yeah, the fact is, if you're sending a barrel full of chemicals up and down the country, the label's small fry. You know, some of our customers spend more money annually on toilet paper than they do with us. I mean, you you kind of have to think about how seriously you take yourself if yeah, that's yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, it should just work. It shouldn't be a pain. It should just work. And, you know, every so often we'll ring you up and say, is everything all right? And you go, yeah, and that's perfect, you know, because we appreciate you. But more... You joined a company as a buyer. That's not what you want to be going straight after, so... It's um, it's just got to work, yeah. And and that's what we've gone for, yeah. And if it works, life's you know you're halfway there. Absolutely, absolutely. And James, um, what would you say? Um, what other things might you've learned about yourself over these last eighteen months? I'm not very good at the whole. Celebrating the wins. I'm not, uh, <laughs> you know this. <laughs> I'm not prone to jumping up and down and shouting at good Indeed. things. I am. Um, my when I when I first joined the business, we were not. Times weren't, you know, all sunshine and rainbows. And um, as I said, the financial crash. We're not in finance, we're not a bank, but you, everywhere felt it. Yes. And, you know, you get to the end of the month, you're working hard to get your figures up for the end of the month, and then, you know, ring the bell next round, let's go, first of the month. And you ne we never sat down and said, God, do you know what? It's like November was our best November ever. Yeah. And we didn't. There was no popping of corks, no, you know, jumping up and down shouting. It was just kind of a, it's good that, let's move on, next one, bills need paying. Um, and I think 
that kind of attitude can be a sort of thief of joy. It yes. has that kind of. There is a point where pragmatism just runs into being ground down a bit, and you know, I was talking to a couple of people from our IT department and looking at what we were doing the other day in terms of um, like quotations and yeah, and order kind of the the boring guts of business that kind yeah. of make the world go round. And it's like, I was looking at a, a quotation that had been done for a piece of software and our software in a nutshell allows you to take a chemical product, stir it up with a series of others. I appreciate the word stir is fairly vague, but <laughs> go with me on this and then say, well, I've put so many parts of this and so many parts of that and so many parts of the other. And that's going to kick me out a chemical that has these characteristics. And our software lets you go from that point to a point where you can say, right, well, I've got my chemical. I know what it does and what its hazards are and how it can be handled. And I've got now got a label I can stick on a barrel and shove off down the M62 to sit in the traffic with everybody else. Yep. So when you look at those quotations and you kind of think, God, when I first joined – one of my first jobs was trying to get that to have our branding on and put our right. name on it. It was just a blank word document with the, it looked like a, a CV from the early nineties. You know? <laughs> no, no, you do need to spend a little, a moment and think, God, we've come a long way. And it's really key for two reasons is, as you rightly say, it could be a thief of joy, but, but also, to build resilience, and uh, mm -hmm. if, we, if we don't celebrate our wins in some way, and it, it, you know, however modest or or immodest we want to be, um, that they're the building blocks of of our self confidence in we're doing it, we're doing it, doing it. So there's build we build the belief systems up up of we are continuing to do it, we are successful, and if we don't, when it's difficult, when we do go to difficult times and we haven't celebrated, typically our resilience may be lower. Than, and we therefore we have to draw on our own sort of um energies and that and that could be a problem so it, it is important it, yeah, it, it can. you know we we can all do it different ways to different levels uh, there's plenty of organizations that perhaps over celebrate but a lack of celebration i think in wins is is you, you know it's a slightly dangerous place to be because as i say it's um and as you say it become become joyless which is um not you know for me not a great place to be for anyone in in any organization no, and it's like we had our best year ever, ended on the 31st of October. Brilliant. And, you know, you've got to sit there and think and tell people, well done. You know, we did a good job. <laughs> We've, you know, it's, you can't just be there and going, right, next, you know, we're back to zero again, let's go. It just, it's just... <sighs> <laughs> it steals some of the joy from it and it takes away that kind of sense of achievement and you know it's so how it's are like, you so how are you going to celebrate james how are you going to celebrate your best year ever i don't know i, I genuinely don't. we're going it's our christmas do tomorrow night so i'm you know we're all going out and going out into leeds and we're going to see what happens uh, and brilliant so it should be a good do and second we was taking 25 out for dinner, so it should be really? a great chance to sort of just be people and just enjoy that moment of, yeah, we, we've done well this year, you know. Absolutely. And it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be this kind of, uh, whew, survived another year, you know, it, that's, and it shouldn't, and it shouldn't be, oh, it's the Christmas do, because we always do it. It's, it's you know, let's, you know, just just have a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh and, and just sort of think, yeah, do you know what? <laughs> that were good, that. So one thing, one thing you can do it is if we, for whatever reason, feel feel limited to be the driver of that, is to appoint um, either a chief fun officer <laughs> or a chief officer of celebration in this particular case. is. <laughs> Find the, find the person that, that celebrates the most and put them in charge and say, right, <laughs> we have a win. You decide what it should be. Because why not? Yeah. 
It's like, mm. you know, I, I know from, from speaking previously and know each other a little bit that you you know you you are a very modest man and and you 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 don't necessarily see the wins that you achieve as as, as significant as perhaps those around you do. Um and if if that you know in which case get somebody else to do it. Yeah, I've never thought of that. My um I think it's is it, it might be the Spike Milligan book, but um the morale officer was always the one that was like was there with the comment of, oh, yes, I'm going to go over the top and we're all going to get killed. Oh, thank you, morale officer. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not really going to work, is it? <laughs> <That> is actually... <laughs> but, I mean, from my point of view, you know, giving people pay rises, giving people bonuses, Christmas bonuses, they can go home and spend on your family or your kids or right. just go and do something nice or just go and sit somewhere and not right. rush up and down. You know, great. There is, there is a great joy in being ten minutes early and having nothing to do. You know, and and just sitting there and thinking, it's much for me. I I've got three young kids, so I I spend a lot of time rushing up and down and all the rest of it. But just taking a moment, and saying, done well there, you know, and 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 enjoying these these wins because yep. When times are hard, it feels like you very quickly empty that bottle yes. of positivity and, and that's when you need it most. And you need to be, I think, do you know what? Yeah, I remember the good time. I remember when it was this or it was that and, you know. Absolutely. For us, that was a long time ago now. But it's a sort of a scab that's kept fresh for me a little bit, I have to confess. Yeah, so it's really, really important. We keep, mm. but but and and you know they put it into context. Not just for us; it's for our team because the team want to see, Not, as you say, uh, you know, that, that that we are a a business of celebrating our wins. Because as you you know you you used words earlier quite rightly. If we don't, then it can be it become a bit joyless, and you know very few people want to work in a joyless environment. So it, it is important that we, mm. we 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 make things happen. So. Mm. Looking forward, James, what does the future look like for you guys and what do you see the main challenges you might face, if any? At the moment, it's about growth. As a business, we're growing right. and we are. We will come up to that kind of um, line of there will be growing pains. There will be, and it will be, kind of it's always kind of the daft stuff that you don't think about but it's we have the capacity in sales we have the capacity in, in um in manufacturing but there are always bottlenecks to look at there will always be bits where we kind of go oh you know how do we process invoices faster how do we how do we report back that information so that we refine our approach that we yeah. in the right thing but the right people in the right situations because my side of things is very much making sure the resources are in the right place. It's not yeah. about how many can I do today. It's about, you know, getting people in the right places, people having the right resources. Have it sounds quick and simple, but, you know, we deal with a lot of big companies who have, very much a, it's either right or it's wrong approach there's not this kind of a oh, i'll speak to you know so and so in accounts and it'll all be fine yes. you know it's very much a we deal with some very very large companies yeah. and all our paperwork and this is a tribute to our accounts department is always has to be spot on yeah. otherwise you go through this process of yes. <laughs> it being it being rejected and you've got to spend time and effort reissuing and before you know it, it, weeks are slipping by. And yeah. while the cash gap for us isn't that massive an issue because we have a lot of customers buying at any one time rather than having large projects with individuals. So it's not like we have um, big lumps of, of yeah. um, orders going through. It tends to be more on a churn basis. Yeah. But it can still put pressure on if you let it go. And yeah. especially if you have a lot of 
a lot of paperwork going out. You need it to be right. It should be right. You know, yeah. how easy is it to do business with your company? Well, getting the invoice right, getting the order right, it's all yeah. part of that. Not yeah. just your products working. Yeah. It's, you know, how many times have you thought, oh, I'm not going to buy something from there. I'm going to buy it from there because the online purchase experience is poor or i mean at this time of year getting deliveries from certain companies that think that chucking it over the garden walls all right rather than you know and i appreciate a lot of that is probably because the guy doing it's been paid about 30 pence a parcel but yeah. it's that kind of feeling it's that kind of oh well that's made life a bit more difficult or i've got to go down to the post office or whatever yeah. but just making things easy yeah getting that right and that all takes time, it all takes capacity, and it takes experience as well, you know. And we're very lucky that we have a lot of people that have stayed here a long time mm. and know what they're doing. But that cuts the other way that if you start trying to increase capacity, it's like, look, five years, they're not the new kid anymore. You know, that's that ship has sailed. So yeah. It takes a lot of time to kind of get people involved, get people kind of up to speed on what we do and how we do it. And I think as we grow, these kind of shortfalls will be there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's always about this kind of throughput. You know, we do doing 10,000 orders a year ish there is a lot of there's a lot of orders to raise a lot of proofing to do a lot of the accounts in interactions it's you know and it's it's trying to streamline that process and so much of it is driven by making it easy making it fluid yeah Pointless or busy work or, you know. Yeah. And that, I think, will be our our next kind of growing pains. I think that'll be where we yeah. are. I mean, we've got some new people in sales, and it always takes time to kind of make introductions, get them used to our industry, how we do things. But we've, we've always tried to recruit on character. You know, if someone's... Yeah willing to get stuck in yep that's great and i appreciate the sme environment isn't for everyone well yep. i i can't really comment because i mean i came into this business straight from university um <laughs> when i was 15 i wanted to be a vet and never thought i'd come into the family company and you know never wanted to but by that point i did and it really it kind of struck me as a, a student that actually no, this is a great opportunity for me to get involved and and be part of it, part of something, you know, that my family's worked towards for some time. Yes. And it's um it's a great it's a great thing to be part of. But at the same time, there's a lot of um there's a lot of opportunities for um making sure that everything's got to run right. Everything's got to be smooth and we've got to appreciate that, you know, if what is natural for someone with 15 years service, you know, you don't appreciate how much you know or don't know at yeah. that stage. You know. So it's important system about, you know, systems and processes and yeah. have two manuals are developed by those that know for those that don't know yet, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And, and and doing that. So and and I guess from what you've said, you know, very sensible is, you know, there will be pinch points, and and I guess the the, the sort of um, Sir Clive Woodward um, philosophy is looking forward to say what might they be, and and therefore what might we do if they happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think he uses the teacup principle of think correctly under pressure of pre-thinking what might go wrong, and then use you know getting the team together to say let's have some contingency in those areas because. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, you know, problems happen. I mean, that's a that's a function of business. And if we've if we've got you know the ability for some foresight, um, we're most likely to mitigate mitigate these problems better than if we just sort of wait till they happen, then 
fall in a heap and go, oh my God, what's going to go next? <laughs> Just sitting there with your fingers in your ears because yeah. everything's all right today. It, yeah. it doesn't get you anywhere. I mean, it's nice and serene, Absolutely. but but I think there's a balance between spending all your time thinking, oh God, what if this happens? What if that happens? Yeah, yeah. To keep that perspective is, is yes. kind of the key. Yeah, and, and processes give you that. They give that. Without doubt. Well, you can plan in quite a structured format for what is likely to go wrong. Yep. And what you can put in good contingencies for. But there's a point where then we'll deal with that. But the important thing is keeping that, you know, 90 percent running smoothly yeah brilliant brilliant well J- james it's been brilliant talking again about the whole every everything hibiscus and um g- great to see and it says great to see that you know as you said your success is best best couple of months best year uh and and you continue to grow and and you know it's great it's great to see that and i know you're investing in that growth and making it happen and, yeah. and supporting a great team. And for, for anyone that was interested in contacting you or Hibiscus, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, LinkedIn's easiest for me, James Killaby. Um, there aren't many Killabys on there, luckily. Um, you'll know the picture, I admit, I have a lot more hair in, but uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and uh, Hibiscus PLC, searchers, we're in Leeds. Um, you can see our enormous multicolored sign from the uh, the M sixty one. So Absolutely. if you're in the area, you know kettle's always on. And uh, yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been uh, been interesting. <laughs> no, thank you so much. It's it's you know as as I always say, um, it's great to see how many brilliant businesses doing very specialist things right on our doorstep. You know and and. You know, realizing that we have a business that's got a significant market, you know, very significant market share in a very specific thing, but something we're all aware of. We all see these signs on the back of tankers. And yeah. like you said, you know, imagine if there was a, a tanker crash and that information wasn't there. That is a very dangerous place to be, I would imagine. Well, we've had our labels on the H1N1 vaccine. We've had, we've done labels yeah. for. Companies sending um, USA, I mean, handlers for USAID going out to various places in Africa. Um, yeah. We do, I mean, it's ridiculous. The amount of random stuff we get involved in, I mean, a lot of it is based around scale. So yeah. something that when it gets to the consumers in an incredibly small quantity, if it was in a vat the size of your desk, would be hazardous. So there's, I mean, one of the one of the big examples is pigments in makeups. So to make a green colour, and I use green because we had a have a customer that does the green. Yeah. Um, if it's in a, an IBC full, it'll burn your skin. It'll kill aquatic life if it gets into the water systems. Right. But by the time of reduce that quantity down to the point where someone can put it on their face <laughs> yes. it's not no you know <laughs> so it's it's remarkable and you don't appreciate how um how these things sort of taper through the supply chain you know and it's like whiskey is is shipped around at 80 uh, proof which makes it a flammable liquid right yeah um, and eight percent proof—a dangerous choice, I would say. Yes, uh, well, it's yeah. Labels, um, and and we've done labels for literally all sorts, and it's it's interesting. It's something to be part of. It's yep. it's good. It's good. And um, one of the the favoured. Um, examples was we did some labels for a pool cleaning company they did right. chemicals yep. put in a pool yep so um and hot tubs and this kind of thing and um some of the we were printing these labels and in one of them um there is a a young girl in a in a rubber ring in a swimming pool as is the, is the picture on it with her parents well it's supposed to be her parents i assume and uh, all three of them had handlebar mustaches because the plates weren't 
um, were clashing slightly. So there was a big dark tone around her. Oh, Fantastic. no. Full <laughs> family handlebar moustache. Fantastic. Oh, Which fantastic. Yeah, caused a lot of mirth before they fixed it. But <laughs> 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 that, I mean, daft stuff. And silly stuff like I guess you through the day, doesn't it? I mean, it's a bit of a laugh. And Absolutely. Don't take yourself too seriously. Absolutely. <laughs> a very, a very yeah. uh, good thought. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much. And, and it'd be great again to catch up in another perhaps not quite so long this time, but maybe another yeah, six yeah. months and, and see the celebrations <laughs> yeah. we've got for next time. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, James.